folks, Clyde Lindsay here from Pixel Pro Displays. Thank you for taking the time to check out today's Tips and Tricks video. It's been a little while since I've been able to sit down and really make some good content. We have been super busy for the 2020 season, um, and we're grateful for that. Thank you very much to everybody who's out there listening. We appreciate everything that you have done for us over the past uh, three years, and this year has just been really truly amazing we hope the content that we do create is helpful to you and that if you do find it helpful that you continue to watch hit the like button if you like the videos subscribe to the channel if you like our sequences please join the ppd sequence club that's one of the reasons why we do this so um folks today i want to get in to doing some sub models today and the reason i want to do that is because i had a client that uh, asked me uh, to do some uh, custom sequencing work. And uh, whenever it came to their uh, model that they used for the Mother of All Reese, which is a Gilbert engineering prop, uh, there were no sub-models at all inside this, inside this model at all. And um, I thought, well, I'm going to take some time and I'm going to create some sub-models. And when I looked at the model data, if you open up the model data here, because this is a custom model, uh, it, it, it looks good, but it's really tight. And I wanted to make sure that I was picking out the right pixels whenever I was going in to create the model uh, or whenever I was going in to create the submodels, that is. Uh, so what I did was I used another model to help me create the submodels, and then I imported those submodels into this model. And that's the lesson I'm going to show you today. Um, this lesson works pretty much on any circular or wreath or circle prop um, that is out there. Uh, although mileage varies because of different layer sizes, the mother of all wreaths though happens to be one uh, or ten rows of 64 pixels, one to 64. The next row is concentric, so it goes inward. So it starts on the outside, on the bottom here, and it goes inward and it goes in a clockwise front view direction. So what we're going to do is we're actually going to make life simpler by creating another model. And we've already done that. And this is a circle model. And all I did was I set the, uh, I, I came up here, let's see, I can show you real quick. I just did this, put it, I clicked in, I clicked on the circle model and I clicked and dragged out and it comes standard with 50 nodes. There are 640 nodes on the Mother of All Reefs. There are 10 layers. And after you enter that data in, now we can create uh, a bunch of new lines here. So if you, all you do is you just put the layers of the, of the uh, circle from the uh, outside in or inside out, uh, whichever, whichever it is. Uh, well, it says here inside, so you'd start at the inside. And since there's 64, you just go 64, 64. You have to click on it each time. Six, eh, darn it, 64, et cetera, et cetera. So you can see it building here, and it eventually will build this thing. Um, yeah, I, and I'm, I'm just going to delete that. So that's what I did. I started at the bottom of the wreath, just like this one was here. And I also put it in the clockwise direction because this model went in the clockwise direction. So basically, we have identical models. And I absolutely love the circle model for doing sub-model sequencing or uh, sub-model uh, creation because when you do, uh, it makes it really, really, really easy. And you're about to see why. So first off, uh, if we do go into sub-models and look at the, the sub-models that we have here. Now, I did create these earlier. Uh, if we go to add a sub-model and we double-click here and we just look, you see how... It, it, not that you can't do it. You certainly can come in here and you can click and select and, you know, drag out and stuff. But it's not as pretty or set up as well as the circle model and I'll show you why because if you check out uh, the circle model here um, and this is the model I used earlier if you uh, come in here to the submodels task window and you can see I've already created some rings and uh, you can see I created let's see uh, some clockwise spirals and this was really simple. This didn't take me very long at all to do. In fact, we're going to make the opposite of this one. But to know how we did this, I'm going to uh, just double click on this one. And you see, instead of having that other dialog that had the whole wreath up, this puts the uh, model, the, 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 um, the, the circle model, it, it turns it into one long 
kind of ribbon and it's continuous. Now I think there is a um, bug with X lights uh, that the first model and uh, number in the circle model defaults to like a, a crazy number because it's weird. Uh, if you select it, if you do select this, it puts that number in there, but it's actually you have to go back and change it to number one. So it works, but that is a bug. I'm probably going to have to report that. Um, but anyway, uh, what I did was I just I, I calculated that 64 divided by 8 equals 8, and I went and I made eight of these diagonal line models. And whenever you click OK, look what it creates. So I did that eight times. I went to the number eight each time, and I did that. So instead of doing this diagonal pattern to this way, we're going to go the other way and make another submodel. So I have the opposite or the counterclockwise. Um, spiral. So I'm just going to click OK. You can see whenever you click on the center there, on the node range uh, icon there, uh, it lights all of them up that are on there. And what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to add, uh, I'm going to type, let's uh, don't, don't make fun of my typing, spiral, C clockwise. And then you're going to hit the tab key and the tab key enters the text and um, uh, allows it to, or, and, and allows you to to go in, and it saves the text. Uh, so now we know that we're going to start with those number eights. That's going to be our our number that we start with because we know that we can uh, divide this up rather easily by eight. And I'm going to double click on this bottom here, and I'm going to use this uh, uh, selection tool called ordered selection. Now this does take time because it literally does. You have to put these in order. Now if you watch this down here along the bottom of the screen. Uh, I actually can make this a little smaller. You don't need it that big. There we go. There we go. Um, I'm going to start here with the number 8, and I'm going to just click. And, and ordered selection is important because what x Lights will do is it will run the pixel data that you tell it. It will run that data in the exact order that these pixels, as if they're in a straight line. So it's only going to address those pixels in that physical order whenever you do per model single strand or in other instances. But this to me is a rather easy way for you to think about uh, using ordered selection is the, the order that I'm selecting them. Now notice that I ran out of pixels over here to select. I'm going to go up to this row here and I'm going to click on this one here. Whoop. Uh oh. There we go. And then I'm going to collect, uh, select that one there. So now you see like 639 is the last one, 639 is the last one. If I click OK, now check that out. See how it looks like a counterclockwise spiral? So what we'll do next is we'll add a row, double click here on the bot on the the uh, side on icon. Now we started with eight. Let's go, let's add eight more. That's 16. And we're just double clicking using the ordered selection. We're double clicking. Uh, and this is uh, it's doing some models. I enjoy doing them, but they're very time consuming when you have a really, really big model. Um, and that's all I'm doing. So there's two of them. Let's go ahead and add another row. Double click on that, that side word bottom. So 8 and 8 is 16 plus another 8 is 24. Let's go to 24. Bam. And uh, let's just knock these out. It does get. Uh, your finger does get tired after clicking on them so many times, but that's okay. Uh, let's go ahead and add another row. Double click on the bottom. 24, let's say 32. There we go. And let's add another one. We're almost done. We're at the half. We're over the uh, 32. We're at 40 now. There we go. Click OK. Look at all those. That's it's it's coming in. It's coming in rather quickly. And 42 plus 8 is uh wait, 40 uh, is that what it was? 40, 48 is next. I'm losing track. I'm losing my mind. Losing my mind. Everybody's laughing. Old Clyde, he can't remember what number he had. You know Sub Rob's out there laughing at me. Click OK, and where are we at now? Let's, uh, we have 40, yeah, see, 8, 16, 24, 30, 48. Let's add another one. So what's 8 plus 8, plus eight is 16. That's uh, double click on the bottom, so 48. Um, 56, 7 eighths or 56. 
So I still remember some math. Sub Rob's still laughing at me. Hey, Clyde, you did a horrible job imitating me. Yeah, I did. And I'm not good at imitations. There's nobody can imitate Sub Rob. He's amazing. Uh, let's go ahead and add another row. Um, 56. So 56 plus another 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, uh-oh, 64. Hey, we're at the end. We're at the end. This is the last one, folks. So let's go ahead and finish up strong. Yep, you can do it. You can do it. You can do it. So now we're making, we're, we finally finished a submodel. Let's go ahead, click OK. Let's click OK real quick here. Well, we can look at it. You can look how, look how pretty. It's going to be so easy to throw some cool effects on there. And you know what? Don't limit yourself. If you want to, you can spend extra time and fill in this a little bit more and add another extra spiral on the inside. I mean, they're your pixels. Do what you want with them. But this was something that easy for me to really go in here. You click OK. Never click Cancel after you add a submodel, and then come down here and click Save. The reason why, if you hit Cancel after you've created the submodel, it'll close it out and you won't have it. So there is our there is our spiral clockwise or counterclockwise spiral. Now I'm going to move this up here. Bam. Because you can click and drag those. I bet you didn't know that. I bet you didn't know that. Um, but you can see how these are counterclockwise because if you take them and you spin it, that's the way the arms would spin if you spun it counterclockwise and then this is the clockwise if you took it and spin it, it would the arms would lean to the clockwise direction. So that is that, that's the submodels. Now, how do we get it in from this model here to this model here? Well, this is this is really slick. It's huge thanks to Scott uh, Scott Hansen who did this edition. I believe I, I'm pretty sure he did. After I begged him on all fours and said, so, so, "Please, Scott, please, Scott, please, 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 Scott, I need an import. I need an import." And this is how we do it. We have this import from a model. Now, n take note, I have this circle model called Mother of All Wreaths. I'm going to go ahead and import from a model, and I'm going to scroll down to the letter M for Mother of All Wreaths. Mother of All Wreaths, right there. And what x is going to do is it's going to say, oh, look, you have some models that are already the same between this model and this one. Do you want to override them all? Eh, sure, what the heck. But now look, look what we've successfully added. We've successfully added spiral clockwise and spiral counterclockwise. So now these models with this model, which didn't exist, now exists on this model because that's what um, my client's going to use. But I was able to easily add this from one model to another. So I'm going to go ahead and click OK. Again, if you click Cancel there, it will not save your changes. And then I'm going to click Save. And basically, that is that. Now, if you were adding this in, let's say you've already got, you're all, we're in the pro layout, right? You've already got your PPD wreath. Let's say you got the PPD wreath, and this is your, uh, you're updating your, your uh, model already. What you're going to do, what you can do, this is one of the awesome things that you can do in x -Lite. So check this out. If we were going to add submodels into some existing groups that we already have, so for example, the PPD wreath has some pretty pretty awesome models. I spent a lot of time submodeling the, the PPD wreath. There's like the centerpiece. There's some outer diamonds. There's some wreath petals. <gasps> oh, look at that. There's some clockwise, C clockwise, counterclockwise spirals. Oh, look. There's some clockwise spirals. Guess what we can do is we can come down here to our mother of all wreaths and watch how easy it is if you have existing groups inside of your um, inside of your model uh, or inside your layout. If you come down here and you extend out, use that, see that little carrot? Push that little carrot. And, and if you see the clockwise, see spiral clockwise right there, let's go up and let's hold the key, control key. I, I don't know, Mac users, if you have a uh, you don't have a control key, but I, I think you can select multiple things with the command key. I don't know that, though. I don't have Mac, but you can tell me if it works. Um, I'm holding the control key down, and I'm scrolling with my mouse down to the clockwise spiral on this one. So there they are. Now, of course, this looks really pretty because math does nice things in, in x lights. But this one, maybe not as pretty, but it still does the job. Who cares? Um, now we've got them both selected. See this? We've got the one up here selected. We've got this one down here selected. We're going to right click and we're going to add selections to an existing group. 
Oh, how easy is that? I'm going to scroll down to PPD Reef, and we're doing the clockwise. So let's add it to the, the spiral clockwise group for the PPD Reef. If you have one of these, now look what happened. Now, whenever you click on it, see the counterclockwise has this one in it, but it doesn't. it's not yet in here. And you can easily add the spirals to your existing group if you add that submodel in. Look how simple it is just to build up a little bit. Uh, you know, look, we've been doing this for about 10 minutes, 15 minutes, and you've got this awesome submodel here that you've added in really easy. And whenever you, if, if you download our PPD sequences and you have this wreath, you can use this submodel now to import the PPD spiral effects from the PPD wreath uh, or any of the other submodels. It doesn't matter if you have a prop from another vendor. If you create submodels in that prop that are similar to submodels that are in, say, the PPD wreath or maybe the uh, Boscoyo snowflakes, uh, you can create your own submodels and you can add them to the existing groups that you already have for those. And bam, you can import any effects, any effects at all whatsoever. You don't have to buy a specific sequence just because it has special sequencing for this prop only. Every effect in Xlates works on every model. It may work differently, but it does something. So just keep that in mind. So let's do that again. I know everybody was so excited. That was so interesting to see. We're going to do it one more time. We're going to add the C clockwise, which is counterclockwise. Hold the control key, C clockwise, right click, add selection to existing group, and go to the PPD C clockwise group for the PPD wreath and click add. Takes a second. And now you can see we have two groups set up nice and easy. Now, if if you also have the uh, the the PPD wreath, we have a wreath rings group. And if you want to, you can come in here, and you will see that we did take the time to make rings. And if you take the rings, see how they're all the rings are filling in there for you. Ten rings there. Hold the control key, scroll down a little bit, control and click and click, and there you go. Look, right click and add selections to existing group all the way down here wreath rings bam I think I, oh, did I miss one I think I missed one bad Clyde I should be fired I should be fired but you know how to fix that now look 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 at that look at that look at that now you've got you've got some uh, I think I got a boo-boo with one of them uh, on that ring there but in any event this is how it's done folks um, I, I really I, I wanted to have I hope to have a good video out to you guys something because we're in the middle of sequencing season and uh, we're into getting ready for your layout and because I know everybody's trying to throw things together and get ready for the wonderful holiday it's it's literally a week and a half or two weeks away from Thanksgiving we're so excited and we cannot wait so uh, guys that's all from me here remember if you like the video hit the like button don't forget to hit the subscribe button down below. Uh, questions, comments, and and uh, anything else, put that in the notifications or, or, or in the comment section down below. As well as, if you haven't joined the PPD Sequence Club, this is the time to do it, uh, especially November. This is the busiest time of the year, and the last thing you have uh, on, on your on your mind is, is what do I, how am I going to sequence all this stuff? Um, also, don't forget, we have an awesome group community called Pixel Pro University where we do live things like this all the time. Uh, we try to do live webinars whenever we are not slammed. Uh, we try to do webinars and answer questions, and we have a Zoom room that we do uh, usually on a monthly or bi-monthly basis. So, guys, that's it for me. Clyde here at Pixel Pro, this Pixel Pro Displays. I can't even talk. Clyde at Pixel Pro Displays signing off. Have a wonderful night, and thank you for joining us in this awesome video. Guys, have a great day.